we all like accessories occasionally for our ham radio hobby, don't we? And with the present sunshine and the beginning of summer, it's the time when we think about going on holiday. Even this uh, fig tree in my garden is laden with figs, so uh, we should enjoy figs later on in the summer. Anyway, accessories. Sometimes you go on holiday and you may be staying in a hotel or a lodge or something and there's no way that you can put up an external antenna for transmitting, but you'd like to keep in touch. Perhaps you've got a, one of these all-band receivers. You may have an IC705. You may have a Zego 6100 or something similar. You know you can't transmit, but wouldn't it be nice if you could put an aerial on it? Plug a random bit of wire into these receivers and they don't perform very well at all. But here's an accessory which may enable you to keep more in touch with the HF bands than you would with just a bit of wire stuck in the antenna socket. Well hello and welcome to this video channel which is presented to you by Waters and Stanton. My ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor and my name is Peter Waters. Every so often I look along the shelves in our warehouse and uh, have a look to see what is uh, around and if there's anything new that I haven't seen, particularly accessories. I think accessories are quite interesting because sometimes you come across something and you think, well, I've never seen that before. Or does it work? Well, just such an accessory I found only last week, made by Texan. Let me just show you what uh, is uh, on the outside of the box. It doesn't actually give you too much information, which is why I was a bit curious. If we look at the box, we find that it's an AN48X. It doesn't actually give too much information, except down there where it says it's an active loop antenna for the long wave, the medium wave, and the short wave bands. Now you'd never guess it from that, would you? Because there's no sign of a loop. But if we turn it over and uh, look underneath, we actually find a sort of a diagram. It gives you some idea. So obviously, somewhere in that box, there's a loop. How do you get a loop inside a box that size? Well, we know it's uh, made by Texan because it says so on the box. So let's uh, just open the box. Well, that's what's in the box. At least that's what it appears to be in the box. Not a lot wiser, really, are we? So there's got to be something else in a box that size. Because at the moment, all we've got is a couple of plastic pieces and what looks like a telescopic whip. Hmm. So let me run through what's actually uh, in the box. We've got this, which seems to be sort of a control box. I hope the camera focuses on that. Is that the right way around? Control box with a little plug on the end. Then we've got this dingly dangly thing, uh, which has got cable connected to it. It's like a Y uh, item with a cable connected to it. We've got a massive great long cable here which has got 3.5 mil connectors either end. We've got a lead here which has got a 3.5 one end socket and a BNC at uh, the other end. Looks like an adapter of some sort. We've got another similar lead with the 3.5 socket at one end and a phono at the other end, which also looks like an adapter because we've got yet another one. Another adapter, 3.5 socket one end and we've got a couple of little crocodile clips. So that looks like another adapter lead. We've got a weird looking thing like that, a tube with a 3.5 mil socket. There we are. We've got a little tiny hook for hooking something up. 
We've got an adhesive hook, which I'm not sure you'll see because it's semi-transparent. Got a little transparent hook there. What I thought was a, an aerial appears to be a telescopic thing with sort of connectors at one end. Not sure whether the camera will pick that up. And then we've got a, another couple of items here. Some sort of desk stand and where the camera will pick. I hope the camera will pick all this up. So quite a lot in the box. Well it turns out that little Y section with the wire attached plus this telescopic item is used to form a wire loop and I've hung the wire over a bird table just outside but those two hooks, the transparent um, adhesive um, hook, suction hook or the one that you can attach to, I don't know, a branch or whatever, um, they can also be used to support the loop. Uh, this system this system is for receive only and this is the interface box and it is powered from a pair of AAA cells and they should last for ages. On the front there is the on off button. I don't think you can probably see there's a little LED that lights up and I don't think you'll see that. Um, probably uh, it's too too bright for that. And the RF from the um, as I say the RF from the from the antenna goes into that uh, socket there and the output goes to that cable there. This is a short cable and this cable can then be interfaced with the various cables that you saw when I unpacked the box so that uh, you can that they're basically adapter cables. The idea is that the output of this is fed to your receiver and with those three adapter leads it should cater for most receivers. The two controls here. Uh, this one on the left is the gain control. That determines how much RF is sent to your receiver because it, some receivers are more sensitive than others. So um, you don't want to overload it, but there again, you don't want to, uh, to have a very weak signal. So you, this, this control amount, uh, controls the amount of RF going into your receiver. This control here is a tuning control and that adjusts the tuning. Basically, the uh, antenna system on the shortwave um, seems to cover from about 3.5 megahertz to about 18 or 19 megahertz. So it just misses the 21 megahertz band, but uh, um, it covers the 80, 40 and 20 bands. Um, that, of course, is if you're interested in um, ham radio. Um, likewise, this will also amplify signals on the shortwave band for those that like listening to the uh, broadcast bands on AM. So this really is the heart of the system. By the way, the cable that comes from the antenna to here is about uh, seven or eight meters long. So it's quite lengthy and it's quite a thin cable. So you could actually have the loop outside and have this control panel uh, inside by the radio. Let me show you very briefly what we've got. We've got our loop there. We've got this interface box there got the cable coming down there and then we've got the control box there with the two control knobs and the output of that goes to your receiver. It's worth saying that this tuning control here is not tuning the loop in the conventional way. All it is is peaking. It's a part like a passband. It adjusts the um, passband that goes to the receiver. This this achieves selectivity, front end selectivity, because if you had all the signals going through there and there was no tuning control, then the receiver would tend to be overloaded with signals all over the place. Basically what you've got here is you've got a loop that picks up the signal. I'm not sure what the interface is there. There is some sort of interface there. And then that signal goes to the control box. You've got the RF gain there. And then you've got basically a bandpass filter here, which just uh, adjusts the RF receive from that antenna to match whatever you're tuned to. So if, if for example, you're tuned to the seven megahertz band on the receiver, you peak this and you'll hear the, the noise in the receiver or the signals in the receiver peak. And it means to say that the pass band here is adjusted to approximately seven megs. So it gives you good front end selectivity.
Well now it's time to see how the antenna work. What I did, I got a Zego X6100 and IC705 and I put the antenna just outside the, on the patio, um, about four foot above ground. And I connected the antenna using the BNC adapter. Band conditions weren't very good, but here's a few snippets of what I had with the uh, radio sitting on my lap, as you might do in a hotel. And uh, these are the results that I got. Romeo Sudo Bravo, Italy Whiskey Zero, Romeo Sudo Bravo, over. Italy, from Delta, uh, Lima One, Delta, Go, Sierra and Company, and standby. Sierra, Lima, Yankee Air, just testing one, two, three, and zero. SLY, how's that now there? Radio, yeah, thank you very much. I wonder if you said zero, SLY, what do you think you're cooking this thing on the top, please? Now, as I say, band conditions weren't wonderful, but I got far better results than I would with just a bit of wire stuck into the uh, receiver. And bear in mind that a loop does tend to reduce the interference. So I was fairly pleased with the results. So what about the long wave and medium wave broadcast bands? Well, let me just show you how you connect the antenna up for that purpose. And there's a bit of a bonus, which I'll explain at the end of this test. For the purpose of this test, I used the suction hook and mounted the antenna on the window. By the way, I measured the circumference of the loop and it's around about two meters. Now, if you look at the base of the loop, you'll see that that connection has got a switch on it and you can switch between short wave, medium wave and long wave. Now in this demo I found a medium wave station and you'll hear me peek it up using the tuning control. So I think there you've heard the, you can hear the peak as I tune the control on the left hand side just at the top corner of the video. And finally Radio 4 on long wave. As I tune the loop, you'll hear the signal come in. There is some background noise, but it's not bad on the loop. And then we go off the signal, detune, and the noise comes back up again. And the last two remaining items, the bass stand. Well, it's exactly that, a bass stand to put your radio on. Looks quite nice, actually. And that mystery rod, well, actually, it's a ferrite rod, and it's yet another adapter. It enables you to couple your medium wave or long wave radio into the loop using a ferrite rod. Oh, and I also forgot to tell you, there's a bonus. When you switch to medium wave, that actually will just cover 160 meters as well. It peaks at around about 1.9, 1.92 megahertz. So you can actually receive 160 meters on the loop. It works reasonably well. I heard one or two stations last night. Unfortunately, I didn't have a recorder to record them and there's nothing on the band this morning. But take it from me, it does work on 160 meters. It's a nice little bonus, isn't it? So that was the Texan AN48X uh, loop antenna for receive and only. It works very well, actually. It, uh, as I said during the video, it enables you to receive signals that you wouldn't otherwise be able to receive unless you put up a fairly large antenna or larger antenna. And it's very handy to be able to just clip the loop antenna onto a window or hang it from somewhere and uh, you get some uh, some decent results. And it covers, as I found out, it covers from about 3.5 megahertz to about 18 or 19 megahertz. So it covers the 80, 40, 20 and 17 meter handbands also covers 160 meters and of course it covers the long wave and medium wave. So if you've got a transceiver or a receiver and you want a portable aerial that works rather than the telescopic whip, because it's much better than a telescopic whip, it's worth looking at. As usual, thank you for your support on this channel, I'm much appreciated. And as usual, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.